Good evening and welcome again to the Canadian Orthodox Monastery of All Saints of North America, the Canadian Orthodox Broadcasting System. In our first video this evening, we're going to go on with our discussion about the uh, Ariel Tollhouse uh, heresy. And before we go into greater detail, we have three more groups to discuss. We talked about Egyptian Gnosticism, the Manichees, and a few others. But um, we also have to look at Mandaean Gnosticism, because the Mandaeans are very important in this issue. Mandaean Gnosticism really is older than Manichaeism, and perhaps even older than uh, Christianity itself. The, uh, there were groups in Israel, Galilee, all of the ancient land of Israel, uh, from Judea up north of the Sea of Galilee, who were uh, at the turn of this era into what we call the Christian era, uh, were involved in a kind of Gnosticism and an extreme asceticism. Now, in Israel, part of the reason was they were being driven into this uh, extreme form of Judaism, first of all, because of the Roman, what they perceived to be the Roman oppression and the Roman uh, and Hellenic undermining of, uh, of the uh, faith of Judea. And the Mandaeans were followers of St. John the Baptist. Now whether they originated with John the Baptist or whether they were part of an earlier group such as the Essenes or something, became a little more radical and uh, went to hear the preaching of John and accepted this baptism of repentance because the Mandaeans became a Baptist type of sect. That is, the uh, baptism and repentance became a very central part of their system. Now, because they were persecuted in Judea, in the Aramaic-speaking world, they migrated to Mesopotamia, to the region of, of Babylon and into what is today Iraq, where they still exist, a, almost a shadowy existence now. And in their system, which managed to move farther and farther from traditional Judaism as they went, uh, the uh, idea of, the, the, they borrowed many things from the Chaldean system and from Zoroastrianism as well. And there are two features that we want to discuss this evening, and one is their appropriation of the Theotokos, whom they called uh, Merai. And she was woven into the mythology of Mandaeism. And the Mandaeans essentially uh, taught that Jesus Christ was an apostate follower of John the Baptist, and his mother was somehow taken into Mandaean um, hagiography and became a very part of their teaching. Uh, and we don't need to go into that too much, just that the Mandaeans very quickly uh, adapted to the uh, ancient Chaldean idea of the seven astral planes with the seven archons. And consequently the dangerous ascent of the soul. Now, so far as I know, the Mandaeans developed this imagery in hymnology more than any other of the Gnostics. They had the hymns for the dangerous ascent of the soul, all really based upon the uh, mythology of Chaldea, of the Babylon, uh, where, as we mentioned, you had the descent of the soul you would have to pass through toll houses. The ascent of the soul through the astral planes, you also had to pass through toll houses guarded by archons of the gates. And you could ascend to the seventh heaven, and they added uh, also an eighth one, an Ogdoad, at, uh, above the seventh heaven. And uh, the system of aerial toll houses is what we were interested in because this would have been one of the 
major sources of it because of the hymnology that developed. And like most of the um, Gnostic sects, the Mandaeans would have been rather extreme ascetics, a kind of a street extreme asceticism. And um, the, the um, kind of asceticism that they went into and the order of the kind of monasticism that existed in Manichaeism and structure of life in Mandaeism uh, is very important to us to understand. And we will discuss that uh, shortly. But we also want to mention uh, the Bogomils, whom we'll deal with in some, at some length, Paulicians and Bogomils, uh, because it was fairly late in the seven, eight, nine hundreds into the ten hundreds that the Paulicians and the Bogomils became the dominant force in the Balkans and in the province of Thrace. And um, the Paulicians had striven on the eastern boundaries of the Byzantine Empire in uh, Greater Armenia. And Armenia was a buffer zone between the growing Persian Empire and the Byzantine Empire. And it was therefore a little bit of a free-for-all, being a buffer zone. Um, it, it was free from each empire and had um, uh, a kind of um, openness that permitted the remnant Martianites, uh, the, some Manichaeans, and above all, the military Gnostic sect of the Paulicians, very highly skilled and trained military people. Uh, and there was, would always have been a watch on the eastern edge of the border for spies coming over from Armenia and for or, or Gnostics trying to come in and begin to teach their systems. And um, the other, we'll talk about the Bogomils at, at some length because they had a profound impact on Orthodox Christianity in Eastern Europe and even in Constantinople where some of the wealthier, better families had become Bogomils. And um, in, in eventually uh, Emperor Alexei Komnenos had to burn Basil the Bogomil at stake because it was creating too much um, political strife and dissension within parts of the empire. The Bogomils sent missionaries from Constantinople to the West, and in the West they managed to found another Manichaean type sect called the Cathars, sometimes called the Albigensians because they were centered in Albi. And uh, the Cathars uh, sent delegates to Constantinople where the uh, Bogomil Pope actually lived. And there were councils held among these Bogomils. Cathars and Bogomils were all the same movement. And all were basically Manichaean uh, with some additional mythologies. And the other group that I want to mention at this point is the Kabbalah. And the reason I want to bring the Kabbalah into this at this, at this particular time, to demonstrate the effect of some of these Gnostic movements on Orthodox Christian monasticism. The heresy of the holy names, which began in the Caucasus and spread to Mount Athos, in which, um, and we'll discuss it at more length later, but essentially these uh, followers of the Holy Name sect began to teach that the essence of God was contained in the name of God, <coughs> and that one could approach the very essence of God through the name. Uh, in the Kabbalah system, this uh, mirrors very closely the, uh, the Sefirot uh, segment of the Kabbalah. So the effect of the Kabbalah was at least partly involved in the holy name um, heresy, which ran into the 20th century. So this gives us a better setting for our stage, and from here we'll go on.